a normal day in my studio. Uh, it's just uh, come out in the morning, uh, work for a few hours, go out, sit in the garden, maybe have lunch, uh, take a walk around the neighborhood, come back and work in my studio. If I can't sleep at night, I come out, work in my studio. Uh, the studio is, uh, in some ways, it's sort of an escape uh, for me. And uh, when I'm in the studio, it's uh, it sort of uh, relieves me from thinking about other things in life. I did design the studio. I built it myself. Uh, Chuck Close was my inspiration. And I just thought, man, that's just a great idea. So I tried to uh, build a poor man's Chuck Close easel so it this this easel will allow me to put the canvas in in many different uh levels and also different uh orientations i can turn them diagonally whatever which is uh really a boon to working in terms of uh tools that i use that are uh might not be as ubiquitous as with other artists uh i found those little rubber basting brushes that you can get at kitchen stores. They have those kind of thick rubbery bristles. Um, you can get some very interest, interesting effects with those. I sometimes tend to be uh, kind of minimalist oriented where the uh, surfaces can become almost as if they were uh, completed by a machine and you don't necessarily see the hand of the artist, which is something that I've been uh, trying to explore recently. In terms of uh, there actually being symbols in my work that might be universal to my work, I don't really uh, think that there is anything that exists that way. However, um, I have, uh, I really loved Wayne Tebow. He always has these halos of color around objects. And I have used that constantly in my own work because I just love the way it looks. His appears to be very loose and just part of his painting. Mine, I think, is a lot more uh, scripted and controlled than his is. So there is a, a, a bit of a, a departure the way I do it and the way uh, Wayne Tubo did it, but it, it appears in almost every painting I, I do. So that would be kind of a hallmark that if you saw that, you might say, you know, that Jim Campbell did that. And I think it has to do to some extent with uh, pinstriping. When I was in high school, California car culture was big. Uh, LA artists were highly influenced by uh, California car culture, pinstriping, uh, lacquer finishes on cars, those kinds of things. Uh, so that's part of that that attraction to the the halos that uh, and now I use around objects in my work. I know a lot of people, uh, or at least some people that I know, don't like to really look at much art other than their own because they feel like it creates an interference between what they're trying to say and what somebody else has said. But I think it's important to have some concept of what's going on in, in the art world. Or it, it, it may influence you not so much directly that in your work, but, but there'll, there's things that you can pick up there's not really much new under the sun. You know, we're, we're all just recycling ideas on some level or another. Do I have a creed or a motto? I did have parents who instilled a work ethic in me, which has uh, served me well. So I, I guess, uh, my creed or motto is get in the studio and work because uh, the more you work the better your work becomes particularly at one thing one idea can lead to another and 
uh, when you are, are doing something in a painting and you're halfway through, you'll see something you think, well, the next piece, I could do that. You really do need, I think, to see art as a communication form. And what's the point of doing it if you're not going to communicate it to somebody else, whether they hate it or, or love it or are indifferent? And it, I mean, it can be hard. You know, you are putting uh, your soul out there to a certain extent. And when uh, somebody stands in front of your work and you're standing there with them and they have nothing to say about it, it is, is somewhat daunting.